Hi folks, welcome to Perf Mentor's Micro Learning Session. In this video session, we are going to discuss about IDOC. IDOC is a term that's very constantly used in an, any SAP project. So today, we are going to discuss about what is an IDOC, where exactly is being used, how exactly being used, what are the benefits of using an IDOC in an SAP project. So without any delay, let's get started. What is an IDOC? An IDOC is an SAP object used in SAP application to transfer data of business transaction from one system to another system. So it's nothing but it's an object used for transferring data from one system to another system. It could be from one SAP system to another SAP system or from SAP system to a third party system or from a third party system to SAP system. It could be any of these. Now, how is this transfer facilitated? There should be a medium using which this transfer should happen, right? So IDOC primarily uses two types of interfaces, EDI interface and ALE interface. EDI is electronic data interchange and ALE is application link enabling. So these are the two interfaces using which the transfer is facilitated. So EDI you used if there is a transfer of data between SAP system to a third party system and ALE application link enabling is used when there is a transfer of data between SAP system to an another SAP system. So now let's break into an IDOC and understand what are the contents that are present in an IDOC. As I already said, IDOC is an intermediate document. So IDOC is more like a structure and that structure contains three major entities control record, data record, and the status record. IDOC is an SAP object and it is in a structured format. It contains data in a structured format. It has control record, data record, and status record. So data record will contain information such as IDOC number, direction, whether it's inbound or outbound, basic type, message type, partner profile, and date and time. So all this information are related to the IDOC is stored in the control record. Then comes the data record. The data record contains the actual data that needs to be sent from one system to another. It can contain data like the material, the number of quantity or the status of a particular process. All those information will be stored in the data record. And then comes the status record. Status record maintains the status of that particular IDOC. When an IDOC is sent from one system to another system, right? So there could be a processing that can happen. Right. All this whether it, it is in the processing state or completed state or failed state or partially failed state. So all this information related to that particular IDOC is maintained in the status record. And the status record is usually very helpful because when an IDOC fails, the support team can go and check, you know, what was the reason why it failed and they can try to reprocess. So these are the entities that is present inside the IDOC. Now let's go back. I said IDOC is used for transferring the data of a business transaction from one system to another system. So what are the different types of data transfer movement? So basically there are two types of data transfer movement. One is the inbound processing and outbound processing. Inbound processing is nothing but when a third party application transfer the data to an S4 system, we call it as an inbound processing. And if the S4 system sends the data to a third party system, we call it as an outbound processing. Now we'll try to get into the details of how the movement of data happens from a third party system to an S4 system in an inbound processing. So first let's see what are the systems involved in the inbound processing. As I already said, a third party system. So that should be an application, a non SAP application and that application should send the information. Usually it sends the information in the form of JSON or XML. Then we have the middleware, which will do the conversion of that JSON into a format that the SAP could understand, that's IDOC. And once that conversion happens, it is sent to the S4 system. So where exactly this can be used? For example, if a purchase order is being created by a third party system, right? That information can be sent to S4 and S4 will internally create that purchase order requisition. 
So now let's try to understand this with an example, right? So in case of purchase order creation, if there is a third party system that's used for the purchase order creation, that information can be sent to the S4 through the form of IDOC. And this IDOC, once this IDOC gets processed and purchase order can be created in S4 as well. That's one of the use case. So now let's try to understand the outbound processing. So let's see what are the systems involved. We have the S4, it sends data in the form of IDOC, then it goes to the middleware and middleware would convert that IDOC into a JSON or if it's an SAP system, it will change it into an IDOC and it sends it to that particular third party system or an SAP system. So those are the activities that happens in the outbound processing. And let's try to understand with an use case, right? Uh, for example, S4 creates a purchase order and it needs to transfer that purchase order uh, number or some information related to that for a, to a third party system. It can just send that information to the third party system using the outbound processing IDOC. So now we know where exactly this IDOC is being used. So now let's try to understand what are the performance, what are the common performance that could arise in an SAP project related to this IDOC. So there are a lot of transactions that triggers IDOC and gets processed by the IDOC, right? So in such cases, when we are simulating with huge volume, there will be huge volume of IDOCs that will try to process. If there is no resource, there might be a contention. And other reason could be if the IDOC processing time is going to be high, even that might result in contention. So how we will overcome? What are the different means using which we can identify this problem? So that is for another day. So until then, thank you. Please like and subscribe our YouTube channels so you'll receive more such interesting contents. Thank you. Bye.